Good morning, students. Welcome back. This is Dr. B. Tulasi, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Vignan Srinivasan Institute of Technology and Sciences for Women, Palakkalur. In the last session, we have seen second unit. The contents of the second unit are the classes and objects, the nature of the object, relationship among objects, nature of class, relationship among classes, interplay of classes and objects, identifying the classes and objects, importance of classification. key abstractions and mechanisms these are the topics which we have covered in the unit 2 and uh, in today's session we are going to discuss the unit 3 and the contents of the unit 3 are introduction to yaml why we model conceptual model of the yaml architecture classes relationships common mechanisms class diagrams and object diagrams and uh, coming to the session let's start the basics of the unit as usual let me start with the question what is yaml and the name says it's all yaml stands for the unified modeling language unified modeling language is an open standard graphical notation for system development proposed by object management group object management group is a consortium of software the notation is based on work from grady buch James Ramba, Ivan Jacobson, and uh, YAML is a modeling language to express and design documents, software, particularly useful for the object-oriented designing. The language can be used from general initial design to very specific detailed design across the entire software development life cycle. And uh, unified modeling language is a graphical language for modeling and developing of software systems. The YAML diagram become a common work product for developers use to discuss all the phases of the software development. We have seen in the first unit the phases of the software development, and the YAML is used for the all the phases in the software development. It means requirements gathering and analysis, design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance. The goal here is to model the software system before we build it. Unified modeling language is a modeling language that combines various approaches in a single design language, which is used to plan and create computer applications. YAML is actually a combination of several notations. It means object-oriented design, object modeling technique, which is also known as OMT, and object-oriented software engineering (OOSE). The unified modeling language is a family of graphical notations. backed by a single meta model that help in describing and designing software systems particularly software systems built using object oriented style it means by using oops concepts coming to the next topic that is relationships if you are building a house things like walls doors windows cabinets and lights will form the part of your vocabulary none of these things stand alone however Walls connect to other walls. Doors and windows are placed in walls to form openings for people and for light. Cabinets and lights are physically attached to walls and ceilings. You group walls, doors, windows, cabinets, and lights together to form a higher level of things, such as rooms. Not only will you find structural relationships among these things, you will find other kinds of relationships as well. In the YAML. the ways that the things can connect to one another either logically or physically are modeled as relationships in object oriented modeling there are three kinds of relationships that are most important they are dependencies generalizations and associations dependencies are using relationships for example pipes depend on water heater to heat the water they carry associations are structural relationships among instances for example rooms consists of walls and other things walls themselves may have embedded doors and windows pipes may pass through walls so these type of relationships it means uh, to show the semantic relationship then you use this associations next one is generalizations connect generalized classes to more specialized ones in what Uh, is known as subclass and superclass are child and parent relationships for example a picture window is a kind of window 
with the very large fixed panes. A pastry window is a kind of window with the panes that open side to side. These kinds of relationships, it means here window is generalized and pastry window are a fixed pane. So these are the types of the windows. So uh, this is how uh, you represent the generalization. It means generalization. Window is a parent class. Picture window and pastry window are the child classes. To represent this type of relationship, then we use this generalization. These kinds of relationships cover most of the important ways in which things collaborate with one another. Not surprisingly, they also map well to the ways that are provided by most object-oriented programming languages to connect objects. If you see the figure here, you can see the dependency, association and generalization. So here, window and event. Okay, that is a dependency. And uh, if you see the window, it is having two types of uh, console window and a dialog box. These are the child classes of window. And uh, dialog box and a uh, control will have the semantic relationship that is represented by using association. So here, in the relationships, we are having some terms and concepts. Coming to the terms and concepts of the relationships. A relationship is a connection among the things. In object-oriented modeling, the three most important relationships are dependency, association, generalization. Graphically, a relationship is rendered as a path with the different kinds of lines used to distinguish the kinds of relationships. First one is dependency. A dependency is a relationship that states that one thing uses the information and services of another thing. But not necessarily the reverse. It means dependency. The name itself indicates dependent. So, one class is depending on the other class. For the, there might be the services or whatever might be the reason. So, one class will be depending on the other class. So, this, this relation, this type of relationship can be represented by using this dependency. Graphically, a dependency is rendered as a dash or directed line directed to the thing being depends, depended on. So, so the header, uh, the head portion of the dashed line uh, will be shown on the side of the dependent part, depended on thing. So this is how you need to repre uh, represent the dependency. Choose dependencies when you want to show one thing using another, using. Here we are using, using type of relationship. So it means, uh, as we discussed in earlier classes, the temperature ramp will be depends on the temperature controller. Then, if a, a temperature controller, if you consider a temperature controller and temperature ramp is uh, depending on the temperature control, such type of relationships can be represented by using this dependency. So, there is very much a using relationship. If the used class changes, the operations of the other class may also be affected as well because the used class may now present a different interface or behavior. In the UML, you can also create dependencies among many other things, especially nodes and packages. Here, if you see this film clip and channel. So, film clip is depending on the channel you kept. If you change the channel, then the film clip also will be changed. So, film clip will, is completely depending on the channel you are viewing. This is the relationship you used to represent by using this dependency. Note. Important point to note here is a dependency can have a name, although names are rarely needed unless you have a model with many dependencies as you need to refer to or uh, distinguish among dependencies. It means if you want to give a name to the dependency, if there are many number of dependencies, then you can give the name. Otherwise, you don't need to give any name to the dependency. More commonly, you will use stereotypes to distinguish different flowers of dependencies. Here you can use stereotypes, elements. By using elements, you can represent the flowers of the dependencies. This is regarding the dependency. Coming to the generalization. So, a generalization is a relationship between the general kind of thing. It means super class, our parent class, our base class, and a more specific kind of thing like a subclass, child class. So, if you want to show relationship between the parent and child, then you can use this generalization. Generalization is sometimes called as a easy kind of relationship. One thing is a kind of the more general thing. Okay. So if you want to show 
कार इज ए वेहीकल सो वेहीकल इज ए जनरलाइज द वेहीकल्स में भी मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ स्पेशलाइज लाइक कार्स लॉरीज बसेस If you want to come, uh, show the specialized and the generalized relationship, then you can then you can use this uh, generalization relationship. A child inherits the properties of its parents, especially their attributes and operations. An implementation of an operation in a child overrides an implementation of the same operation of the parent. This is known as polymorphism. To be the same, two operations must have the same signature. it means same name and the same parameters generally generalization is rendered as a solid directed line with a large unfilled triangular arrowhead pointing to the parent so arrowhead should be pointed towards the parent that is the generalization relationship you can see in the figure use generalizations when you want to show the parent child relationships here if you see the example here shape shape is a generalized word the rectangle circle polygon all these are the specializations of the shapes so if you want to represent such type of parent and child relationship then you can use this generalization relationship so a class may have zero or one or more number of parents okay a class that has no parents and one or more parent more children is called a root class it means the class which is a parent class is nothing but the root class it doesn't have any parents so that is also known as parent class or base class a class that has no children it means last level of the class then it is known as leaf class a class that has exactly one parent is known as single inheritance a class with more number of parents is known as multiple inheritance and uh, coming to the multi level inheritance means a subclass derives from a super class which in turn derives from another class is known as multi level that type of relationship is known as multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance a class has a number of subclasses each of which may have subsequent subclasses continuing for a number of levels so that so as to form a tree structure then you can say that inheritance as a hierarchical inheritance next one is hybrid inheritance hybrid combination of all this a combination of multiple multi level inheritance will form a lattice structure that is known as hybrid inheritance if you see the figure here the student student having scholarship so that type of relationship here student and the student having scholarship if one base class and a one child class one child class acquiring the properties from one parent class then you can say that is a single inheritance and multiple inheritance means here one base a uh, one child class acquiring the properties from two parent class then you can say that a uh, multiple inheritance okay so wheeler rubber so tire is acquiring the uh, properties from wheeler and rubber then you can say that is a multiple inheritance next one is hybrid inheritance hybrid inheritance means student uh, student uh, student uh, student uh. so hybrid hybrid means it can be combination of all this multiple multi level all this can be come under this hybrid inheritance multi level so child will be acquiring from the properties of the super class again it will be acquiring from the properties of another uh, base class then you can say that as a multi level so hierarchical means it form a tree structure you can see in the figure this are the different types of inheritance most often you will use generalization among classes and interfaces to show the inheritance relationship in the uml you can also create generalization among other kinds of classifiers such as nodes okay this is regarding the inheritance the important point to know while using this generalization is a generalization with a name indicates a decomposition of the subclasses of a superclass on a particular aspect called a generalization set this is regarding the generalization next one is association coming to the association a association is a structural relationship that specifies that object of one thing are connected to the objects of another then you can use this is just like a semantic relationship an association that connects exactly two classes is known as binary association although it is not as common you can also have associations that connect more than two classes if you connect three classes then you can say tertiary if you connect n classes then it's known as binary associations 
This is regarding the associations. Graphically, an association is rendered as a solid line connecting the same or different classes. Okay. Use associations when you want to show the structural relationships. Beyond this basic form, there are four adornments that apply to association. Here we can use four decorative items for the while using this association. First one is name. An association can have a name and you use the name to describe the nature of the relationship. So any association relationship, while using the association relationship, you can use a name. So that there is no ambiguity about its meaning. You can give a direction to the name by providing a direction triangle that points to the direction you intend to read the name. That means you can see in the figure, your person and company. So person and company having a semantic relationship. And you can give the name as works for person, works for the company. So that uh, name can be indicated by using a uh, triangle. So pointing towards which. So that it will uh, make meaningful to the association. So next one is role. First one is name and second one is the role. When a class participates in an association, it has specific role that it plays in that relationship. A role is just the face the class that at far end of the association presents to the class at the near end of the association. It means what is the role the association, the class is playing in the association. To show that, here you can see in the figure, the class person playing the role as an employee in association, associated with the class company, playing the role of the employer. It means the company's employer is giving employment to the person. So he'll become the employee of that company. So that is the role uh, that can be indicated by using the association. Next adornment is multiplicity. An association represents a structural relationship among objects. In many modeling situations, it's important for you to state how many objects may be connected across an instance of an association. This means how many. So if a company, if you consider a company, company will be one and the employees and the persons will be many. Then you can say that type of relationship can be represented by using this multiplicity. This how many is nothing but the multiplicity. And it is represented by a range of integers specifying the possible size of the set of the related objects. It is written as an expression with a minimum or maximum values, which may be same. Two dots are used to separate the min value and the maximum value when you state a multiplicity at the far end of the association. You are specifying that for each object of the class at the near end, how many objects at the near end may exist. The number of objects may be in a given range. You can show it as a multiplicity of exactly one. If you want to show the multiplicity as exactly one. The organization having only one employer, then you can say exactly one. That can be represented directly as a one. If you want to show zero or one, may or may not have the employers, then you can say zero or one. So if a company having more number of employees, so may or may not have. So if a may not means zero, if it is having more employees means you can represent by using zero dot dot star or one or more then you can say one dot dot star okay so one is the minimum value star is the maximum value you can give an integer range such as two to five see uh, you can use while doing your project work every batch may have two to five that means two three four five whatever might be the number uh, minimum number is two and maximum number is five you can even state an exact number like uh, three. It means only one employer. So you can, that is as one. So if you want to say it as exactly three, you can give it a three. So in the example, each company object has an employee, one or more person objects. It means one or more means, as I told you, one dot dot star. It indicates one or more. And uh, each person object has an employer. Employer can be zero or uh, more. Then you can say zero dot dot star or else you can directly say as a star. This is what, uh, how you indicate the multiplicity. This is the adornment of the association. First one is name, second one is uh, role and third one is the multiplicity. Next coming to the aggregation. It is also one of the type of the association. A plain association between two classes represents a structural relationship between P's. Meaning that both classes are conceptually at the same level. No one more important than the other. Then that type of relationships can be represented by using these associations. Sometimes you will want to model a whole part relationship in which one class represents a large thing. Um, 
which consists of a small things also. It means one whole part and small part. If you want to represent such type of relationship, then for example, engine is a part of a car. Then that type of relationship can be represented by using this aggregation. Mm -hmm. And this kind of rela relationship is called aggregation, which represents a has a type of relationship. Car has an engine. Okay. Meaning that an object of the whole has an object of the part. Aggregation is a really just as a special kind of association and is specified by adorning a plain association with an unfilled diamond at the whole end. So you can see the figure of the aggregation here. The department is a, a company having multiple departments in that a company having a part as a department. If you want to represent whole and part type of relationship, then you can use by uh, represent by using the aggregation. With care, I need to one, specify one more important point. Most cross line, okay, can be avoided. That means if you want to represent two, two types of relationships that are going to cross on one another, you need to avoid such type of uh, relationships. If a line crossing is necessary and there is ambiguity about how the paths are connected, a small arc can be used to indicate that line crossing. You can see in the figure. So if you want to represent such type of relationships, I think you have seen this while uh, drawing the, while representing the circuits. So here also you need to use that line crossing symbol. Okay. And uh, coming to the next common modeling techniques. So uh, these common modeling techniques are used while modeling the systems. So what are the points we need to follow while modeling? What are the techniques we need to apply while modeling? So, to model simple de dependencies, the name itself indicating it is uh, to, to model the simple dependencies, then you need to go for the dependency relationship. So, what are the techniques we need to follow? What are the important points we need to follow while modeling simple dependencies? A common kind of dependency relationship is the connection between a class and that uses another class as a parameter to an operation. So, to model such type of relationships, to model using type of relationships, okay. So, how you are going to model means create a dependency pointing from the class with the operation to the class use it, used as a parameter in the operation. So, which side we need to specify means create a dependency pointing from the class, pointing from the class with the operation to the class used as a parameter, okay. For example, if you see the figure here, okay. Uh, if you see the figure, a set of classes drawn from a system that manages the assignment of the students and instructors to courses in a university. The figure shows a dependency from the course schedule to course because course is used in both the add and the remove operations of the course schedule. So you can add the course or you can remove the course. So that is how you need to show the dependency. So course schedule. Okay. Course schedule means uh, here we are having a dependency from course schedule to course because course is used in both the add and remove operations of course schedule. Okay. So uh, to represent dependency, one class is depending on the other class. Then you can say such type of relationships you can specify by using a dependency. Here also iterator. So the person who is going to teach the class. Okay. So uh, you can, uh, he also depends on the course schedule. Okay, this is how you need to represent the dependency relationship. Again, next one is to model the single inheritance. In modeling the vocabulary of your system, you will often run across classes that are structurally or behaviorally similar to other. You can model each of these as distinct and unrelated abstractions. A better way would be to extract any common structural and behavioral features and place them in a more general classes from which the specialized ones inherit. To model inheritance relationships, given a set of classes, look for responsibilities, attributes and operations that are common to two or more classes. Okay, so if you are having, a, you generalize the classes which are having the same type of responsibilities, attributes, then you make it as a common class. And elevate these common responsibilities, attributes and operations to a more general class. If necessary, create a new class to which you can assign these elements. Okay, that becomes the subclass. Specify that these more specific classes inherent from the more generalized classes. By placing the generalization relationship that is drawn from each specialized class to the more generalized class. That means uh, if you want to represent the parent-child relationship, you need to take some classes having same behavior 
and you take another classes that uh, acquire the properties of that base class, then you can represent such type of relationship by using this generalization. Okay, so you can see the figure. A set of classes drawn from a training application. You will find a generalization relationship from four classes: cash account, stock, bond, and property to more general class named security. So security is the parent, and cash account, stock, bond, and property are the children. Each of these specialized classes is a kind of security. To represent such type of relationship, you can use the generalization relationship. Again, in the stock, you will have you will be having two types of stocks: small cap stock and large cap stock. These are the chain classes of this stock. So that also can be represented by using the generalization represent generalization relationship. So next one is modeling structural relationship. When you model with dependencies or generalization relationship, you may be modeling classes that represent different levels of importance or different levels of abstraction. Given a dependency between two classes, one class depends on another class, but the other class have no knowledge of the one, then. given a generalization relationship between two classes the child inherits from the parent but the parent has no specific knowledge of its children it means sir see here if you see the first point that is dependency and second point generalization and in short dependency and generalization relationships are asymmetric when you model with the association relationship you are modeling classes that are piece of one another so you by using dependency and generalization you can represent the asymmetric relationship if you want to represent the symmetric relationship you can use this association so in association both classes rely on one another here to model such type of structural relationships you need to follow some few points for each pair of classes if you need to navigate from objects of one objects to another specify a association between the two classes this is a data driven view of the association For each pair of classes, if objects of one class need to interact with the objects of another class, uh, other than a local variables in the processor are parameter to the operation. Specify association between the two. This is more a behavior driven view of the association. For each of these associations, specify multiplicity. So I told that elements such as role, multiplicity, and name. Okay, especially the multiplicity, which is the default. Okay. As well as role names, and uh, you can give the names of the association. If one of these classes in an association is structurally or organizationally a whole compared with the class at the other end that looks like parts, mark this as an aggregate. If you want to rep uh, represent the relationship of whole and part, then use the aggregation symbol. Okay, this is uh, by showing the diamond. Okay, association having diamond at the one side, then that is known as aggregation. so see the figure here if you see the figure here this is the structural relationship and it shows a set of classes drawn from a information system for a school starting at the bottom left of the diagram you will find the classes named student course and instructor there is an association between the student and course specifying that students attend the courses furthermore every student may attend many number of courses and every course may have any number of students similarly that can be represented by using multiplicity you will find an association between course and instructor specifying that instructors teach courses for every course there is at least one instructor so you need to specify multiplicity and every instructor may teach zero or more number of course that also indicated by using the multiplicity each course belong to exactly one department the relationship between the school and classes student and department are a bit different here you will see an aggregation relationship okay If you want to represent the whole part, then you go for the aggregation. A school has zero or more students. Each student may be registered number of one or more schools. A school has one or more departments, and each department belongs to exactly one school. You could leave off the aggregation at ornaments and use plain association, but by specifying the school is a whole and the student and department are there, some of its parts, you can make clear which one is organizationally superior to the other. So superior means school is superior to the the other department. uh then the student so you can represent by using this aggregation the schools are somewhat defined by the students and departments they have similarly students and department don't really stand alone outside the school to which they belong rather they get some of this identity from their school so the superior is the school such type of relationships the aggregation relationship between the school and department is composite aggregation composition is a type form of aggregation implying ownership okay 
This is how you need to indicate the structural relationship of the, uh, how you model the structural relationship. So coming to the uh, few tips I need to give you while uh, uh, using these relationships. When you model relationships in the UML, use dependencies only when the relationship you are modeling is not structural. I mean some asymmetric relation relationships. If one class is depending on the other, then you can go for the dependencies. Okay, use generalization only when you are having an easy kind of relationship. Multiple inheritance can often be replaced with the aggregation. Okay, so don't use multiple inheritance. Uh, in that place, you go for the uh, aggregation symbol. Keep your generalization relationships generally balanced. Inheritance lattices should not be too deep. It means the levels um, don't take too many levels, not too wide. It means don't take... Uh, maximum classes okay so use association primarily where there are structural relationships among objects do not use them to show tangent relationships such as parameters or local variables or processes avoid lines that cross unless absolutely necessary so use line crossing if there is no need don't go for that uh, if uh, it is really mandatory then you go for the line crossing show only those relationships that are necessary to understand a particular grouping of things We have covered all the topics of unit 3 and uh, let's have a quick recap what we have seen in this unit 3. In this unit we have discussed about what is UML. The UML is a language for visualizing, specifying, constructing documentation. Why use UML? What is the main purpose of using UML? What is a model? A model is a simplification of reality. Why do we model? And what UML is not? Objectives of the YAML, history of the YAML. We have seen the principles of the modeling. In that we have seen four points. Next we have seen the object oriented modeling. The two most common ways are from an arithmetic perspective and from an object oriented perspective. That's what we have discussed here. A conceptual model of the YAML. Here we have discussed about the building blocks of the YAML. In the building blocks of the YAML, we have seen the vocabulary of the YAML encompasses three kinds of building blocks. Those are things, relationships and diagrams. And coming to the conceptual model, we have seen the building blocks and the rules and common mechanisms. We have seen the architecture of the YAML and this we have seen about the five views of the architecture. And next we have seen the software development life cycle and this we have seen about the four phases inception, elaboration, construction and transition and we have seen about the workflows also. Next we have seen the classes. In the classes we have seen about the attributes, operations and responsibilities. Coming to the common modeling techniques of the classes we have seen the how to model the vocabulary of a system, how to model the distribution of responsibilities in a system and modeling non-software things, modeling primitive types. This is what we have discussed in the classes. Next, we have seen the relationships. In the relationships, we have discussed about the dependency, generalization and association relationships. And we have seen the common modeling techniques. In the common modeling techniques, we have seen about the modeling simple dependencies, modeling single inheritance, modeling structural relationships and creating web of relationships. This is what we have discussed in the relationships chapter. And coming to the common mechanisms, in this, we have discussed about the nodes, stereotypes, tagged values and constraints. So, in the common modeling techniques, we have seen about the how to model the comments, how to model new building blocks, how to model new properties, how to model new semantics. This is what we have discussed in the uh, common mechanisms. Next, we have seen the class diagrams. In the class diagrams, we have seen the uh, what is a class diagram. And uh, in the common modeling techniques, we have seen the how to model the simple collaborations, how to model the logical database schema and uh, what is forward engineering and uh, what is the reverse engineering, how our tools are supporting and uh, is our code supporting or not for the model which we have generated. Next we have seen the object diagrams. In the object diagrams we have seen about what is an object diagram and next in the common modeling techniques we have seen to model the object structure. Next we have seen the same what we have studied in the class diagrams also. That is nothing but forward and reverse engineering. For all these chapters we have seen the tips we need to follow while modeling a system. And uh, 
coming to the next part which is very interesting part that is quiz so in the quiz what type of relationship is represented by shape class and square if you see the figure it is having four options realization generalization aggregation and dependency so find out the answer if you see it clearly you can see as generalization next one is which diagram and you all shows a complete or partial view of the structure of a modal system at a specified time so here we are having four types of diagram sequence diagram collaboration diagram class diagram object diagram for this specified time it means instance for instance we need to use this object diagram which of the following is the building block of yaml so coming to this things relationship diagrams all of the mentioned we know that conceptual model of the yaml consists of building blocks of the yaml rules and common mechanisms coming to the building blocks here we are having things relationships and diagrams so the answer is all of the mentioned next <clears throat> classes and interfaces are part of structural things behavioral things grouping things and notational things the answer is structural things what is the physical element that exists at run time in yaml the options are node interface an activity none of the mention the answer is node which things are dynamic parts of yaml models structural behavioral grouping things and notational things so dynamic parts represents the behavioral things which of the following term is best defined by the statement a structural relationship that specifies the objects of one thing are connected to the objects of another this is association aggregation realization and generalization we know that the semantic relationship is done by using association aggregation represents the whole part and realization is the collaboration property and generalization means it represents the uh, super class and sub class relationship so here the semantic relationship is nothing but the association so coming to the next one object oriented analysis and design can be handled by one who knows yaml so if we know the yaml we can handle object oriented analysis and design no the option is that we are given true and false the option the answer correct answer is false at conceptual level class diagram should include operations attributes both operations and attributes none of the mentioned at the conceptual level it is enough to have or attributes only next what is an object we all know that object is an instance of class an object includes encapsulation of data an object is not an instance of class all the mentioned so object is an instance of class yaml interfaces are used to specify required services for types of objects and the program in java but not in c c++ or some small talk define executable logic to reuse across classes define the api for all classes <clears throat> the answer is specify required services for types of objects and next how many diagrams are there in unified modeling languages 6 7 8 9 so the option is 9 what are they class diagram object diagram use case diagram collaboration diagram sequence diagram state chart diagram activity diagram component diagram and deployment diagram so we are having nine diagrams what are the common mechanisms of object diagram so object diagram is used to represent the object structure so before answer before i giving answer if you can answer these questions you i think you understood the class well if you have any doubts go back and play the videos if you think that i am going a little bit fast don't worry then play the video slowly it means hope you people know how to play the video slowly so if you don't know uh i'll give an idea just go to the settings in the youtube click on the settings you'll have a uh, playback speed you'll have an option known as play playback speed in that you'll be having normal 
and 1.25, 1.5. If you want to go slow, then go for 0 0.75, 0 0.5. If you want to go fast, then go for 1.25, 1.5. So by doing this, you can customize the speed according to your need. So thank you so much. Let's meet in the next session. Till then, have a safe day. Follow SMS as usual. Sanitizers, masks and social distancing till we get the vaccine for the corona. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you.